gives me much pleasure this morning to invite us into the Crisco City Church English service, a place where we acknowledge the true God, the living God, and we confess that he is here in our midst and we want to introduce him to you. Welcome. Let us go through the service together as we get to know this great God. Amen. So we just want to pray and go straight into the service this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everlasting Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you this morning for yet another opportunity to gather in your presence, King of glory. We do not take it for granted, O oh God. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. That blood has spoken over our lives this morning and therefore we enter into the holy of holies by the blood of Jesus to honor you, to celebrate you, to exalt you and Lord to worship you. Thank you for the privilege that you've made an opportunity, you've given us an opportunity that we may encounter you and that is our desire this day. That, Lord, none of us shall be left behind as you visit your children this day in the name of Jesus. Let your presence make a difference in the service. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, cleanse us, purify us, make us vessels of honor, meet for your use, King of glory. As we go through the worship session, Lord, may your presence, O God, be with us, King of glory. Father, as your word comes forth, King of glory, later on in the service, let your anointing rest upon the minister of your word, that Lord, the very oracles of God will flow from his mouth in the name of Jesus. We trust you for a time, a moment, a session of ministration, O God, that you shall minister to your children in a very special way today in the name of Jesus Christ. Just a touch of the Lord is what we desire this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you as we enjoy in the presence of the Lord. Worship team, Karibuni Sana. Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise Jesus again. Amen. I'm seeing people are so happy this morning. We are ready to praise our God. Eh? Yes. Amen. Amen. Icho kwa die, icho kwa di mwari bari fo. Icho kwa die, icho kwa di mwari bari fo. Icho kwa di, mwari bari fo. Icho kwa di, mwari bari fo. Icho kwa die, icho kwa di mwari bari fo. Icho kwa die, icho kwa di mwari bari fo. Icho kwa di.
shall lift our voices in praise, in worship, O oh God, as we declare that you are the Lamb upon the throne, Jesus. O oh Lord, we bless you, Lord, we lift you, we sing to you, my Father, and we bless your name. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. O oh Lord, we allow your spirit to come in us, my Father, to reign in our lives. May your spirit reign in us, O oh God. O oh Lord, may you fill us with your spirit this day, Jehovah. We thank you, Jesus, and we bless your name. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Savior. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known, reveal the glory. to the our God. We honor and adore you, King of glory. You reign in power and strength and majesty, Lord. We declare, Lord, there is none like unto the our King. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus we worship. Amen. Glory to God. We may be seated in the presence of the living God. 
Worship team, thank you very much for leading us well. So it gives me pleasure to invite uh, Professor Igosangwa, Elder, to share with us the word of God. Let's just pray as we invite him. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we exalt you. This far you have brought us, that you may continue ministering to us in a very special way. Lord, our hearts are open, our spirits are yearning, that Lord, you may speak to us. We may obey that which you are uh, telling us at such a time as this. Anoint your servant, empower him by your spirit, king of glory, that the very oracles of God will flow from his mouth in the name of Jesus. We pray for receptive hearts. Lord, hearts that will not only hear, but will seek to do that which you have commanded us, or commanded of us this day in the name of Jesus. We thank you, we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, share with you the word of God. Uh, it's not uh, new, but what we have been reading in the past, but probably in a different aspect, perspective. The word of God is always new every time you read it. So I'm going to talk about the parable of the talents as it is. Uh, before we reach there, um, just open the word of God from Matthew 25, verse 14 onwards. That's the uh, verse which will guide us. Before we reach it uh, there, you've heard a testimony from my sister and uh, what is happening outside there and corruption. Uh, I used to lament, what do I do about governments or systems when they look so rotten? But in the recent times, uh, the word of God has been clear to me that you and me have a duty to pray for the nation, to pray for the leadership. We have to pray for them every day. It's our duty, there's no shortcut. Um, it doesn't matter whether you are feeling good or you are enjoying the system or they are blessed you or not. Wherever you are, pray for the system. Amen. That aside, back to our topic, the parable of the talents, which is Matthew 25, verse 14. In the, before I read this verse, it's true, the government has started working and uh, during this week they have been uh, vetting the, those to be peers and uh, next week they'll start with the CSS. By 28th, they should have been vetted. Somewhere very early next month, they get the official letters to work. So the system will be fully done. Um, we uh, therefore means is a new dispensation, a new time in this country. Now, you may not have been opened a door to no more job, but probably you are an ordinary citizen and therefore the way you live your life is through tread. Uh, God is going not to expect anything less from you. In this dispensation, as we look to the government, we are praying that you'll open up opportunities for businesses, for trade, especially for the young people. Uh, I don't know what your business would be, but God is expecting that we go out there and go in the market. And the marketplace is not easy. It can be very rough. Many of you have been to Gikomba or Wakulima know what I mean. You may be somewhere just moving your small baggage, but another very rough looking person with a very big gun and sack crushes you, and that's life there. You may stand with your small nyanyas there, you try to sell, nobody wants your nyanya, not because they love it, but there's a certain lady or a man somewhere who, who does something and they go there for nyanyas. So the, the world is rough out there. But let's see what God has in his heart about the business place. Let's read uh, the parable of the talents. Um, I'm reading uh, New King James uh, Version. I had NIV, but was reading instead of talents, gold. Uh, talent, talent. 
It actually means gold. Many of you who have wedding rings, you can easily remember how many talents your uh, uh, ring was. It just means the amount of gold in it. Yeah. Now, let's read. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave talents. Uh, sorry. He gave five talents to another two and to another one. To each according to his own ability. May, maybe mark that word. I'm not saying you write anything in your Bible, but just mark it. To each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and dreaded with them. Dreaded. And made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug it in the ground and, his, and hid it his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good faithful servant. You are faithful over a few. I'll make you ruler over many things. Mark that one too. He'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into joy, sorry, enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me to me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents beside them. This Lord says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the uh, to the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered much seed. I was afraid and went and hid my talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said, You wicked and lazy servant. You knew what I, that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wow. Yes, we are going soon to learn a few things on what this means. But I want to take talents over and above gold, over and above physical things, to mean many things. I don't know what talents are to you. Maybe it's an ability or a skill. God has given us different traits. Some are business people. They wake up in the morning, they go to the market, they sell whatever they sell, and that is it. Some has made, God has made us musicians. Maybe you go sing, and probably you make money out of there. Or even if you didn't make money, you make people happy. You also, if you sing for God, you worship. That's a talent. 
Some have been married into teachers. You go out there and mold young ones from uh, uh, the simplest way they were into a people who can uh, drive the services of this nation. Some have been made farmers. They go out there, dig acres and acres of land. And uh, um, from it, they get a crop which they may do business with. Sell and sell. I'm told now in the West, sugar cane is beginning to have a profit. So if you're investing, you can begin from here from me, an agriculturist. You do it. Um, I can name very many of the talents, including banking. God expects that whatever you do, what, however small it is, you need to go and invest. You need to spur up, to stir up that talent. Work every day knowing that you're working for the Lord. Some are administrators, like I am. <laughs> Don't reach the office and you stay thinking I'm working for me. You are working for the Lord. Work for the Lord who is watching for you at you every morning. So the Lord has given us different talents. I don't know what yours is. Probably you know it as I speak. Now, God has given this with one principle that we need to learn. That he gives us according to our abilities. <laughs> the word of God says in Psalm 139, he knew us when you are in our mother's womb. God knew us in Jeremiah. Even before we be, God saw whom we were and he knew us. So he knows our ability. He even knows the ability of the lazy man. <laughs> he knew him. Yeah? He also knows the ability of the one who does a trade but can only handle two things at the same time. But I want us to mark this. Even the one who does two, at the end of the day, head how many? Four. So God believes in growth. Today you are handling two, but tomorrow, if you are faithful in two, you will handle four. So don't fear. Today morning I was hearing about the issue of promotion. Many of you normally ask for promotion. And uh, there was this talk that when you are promoted, there are two expectations. One, God expects you to handle even double the challenges. There are few people who would criticize your work, but now you have very many. And not only just very many, even very nasty ones. They can accuse you of anything you can imagine in this world. But God expects you to be sober and handle it. He also expects you to handle that which goes with that promotion. Is it money, much money? Can you handle it diligently? There are very many, very, a, a very rotten thing in the country. People having the love of money. And actually, if you ask people why they love politics, I'm quite a number of politics. It's because they want to have opportunities to practice corruption either to receive bribes or to give bribes. It's actually one of the things that's doing them. Don't go to the extent of loving money like some people do in the nation. And they would do anything to have money. They would do everything to have money. Even kill, even do immoral things, lie, um, blackmail, uh, anything. By the end of the day, it smells money. And I'm afraid the young people we have now, I don't know, maybe those, not those who are in this church, um, the love of money. When we hear anything to do, how much does it cost? We should be asking the opposite. How will I serve God in that? How will it benefit God? Not 
how much I'll have in the pocket. There are very many communities who are now hiding even money in, 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 in mattresses because of love of money. Let's not go there. Let's love our work. Yes, we invest. Let the money grow through investment. Now, the way of God, when you lead, uh, I've said the way of the world, is different talents, maybe skills, maybe abilities. Uh, some are, are uh, farmers, some are business people, some are engineers, some are lawyers. Let's read Ephesians 4, 11. Um, in Ephesians 4, 11, We read, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Uh, those who are students recently know what I mean by that. The fivefold ministries. Actually, to me, that's what it means the five talents. Some to be? Apostles, evangelists, prophets, teachers, and, and pastors. God has given people those different abilities. And they are individuals who have the five. But God is expecting you to invest these abilities. What ability has he given you? I just want to remind us who are in commitment class. You end up choosing one of those abilities, at least, apart from service, administration, and others. Could you please plant your talent, invest your talent in the rightful place? God is expecting us to win souls. I want us to reflect in ourselves, in our hearts. How many people have you preached to? Maybe today or even yesterday, or even last week, for them to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. It could be where you are doing business, but have you taken time to mention about Christ? If we have not done that, we have not planted our seed. We have not invested our talent we are talking about Brother Kabi. He's an evangelist where he is. Have we supported him? Have we desired to participate with him? When you have time, please do it. We need to be evangelists. We need to be apostles. Maybe some of you are looking at Mama and Daddy and saying, I want your pastors too. The pastor Miss was ready. You may say, Pastor, is that true? You heard what Elder Buru was called yesterday. Reverend? Reverend pastor, isn't it? Do you think those who are for free, they were seeing a pastor in you? And therefore you are a pastor. How much teaching do you do? Even to your own children. God expects us to do the teaching ministry. Maybe you don't have time to do all those. Can you take just two, two alone? God expects you to do those two, even if you don't have time to do the full-time ministry, the little you have. Maybe you may not even speak anything, but can people see godliness in you, the way you conduct yourself? When somebody comes to greet you in your tread, can they see Christ? Can they get a shock? You know what an eel is, isn't it? There's another fish in the ocean. When it touches you, it gives you a shock. That's the defense mechanism. We as Christians, can they feel our shock of Christ in us when they enter into our office? In everything we speak, they know, Apa hakuna mchezo, naongea na mtu wa mungu. That alone is preaching. So God expects us to invest this talent. 
Now, God says in his word, this is the second thing I want us to take home. Uh, he kept on repeating it. Uh, when he spoke about the talents, maybe let me go back to read it. Yes, let's read it from verse 23. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. The Lord rewards as a principle. It doesn't matter how small a thing you have done. If you are faithful and diligently do it, God will make you ruler over many things. Do you want to be a ruler over many things? Then be faithful, even with that one talent he has given you, that ability. Um, Brother Jeremiah has taken us through some repentance here this morning. And I've been look, reading in the book of um, Second Samuel, this is the life of David. And you notice how uh, David uh, was, how he sinned, and with Beersheba, a time when men go out for war, he decided to remain home, meaning he was not working. He removed his face from <laughs> the job. That's the day he sinned. And that sin led to many things. And Nathan told him, I swore you not depart from your home, house. And they all swore. There were two, oh, of course, his children killed each other. Amnon was killed by Absalom. And Absalom ended up cooing his father. There was a coup. It was a, a successful one. It happened. But he died in the process. Again, there was another guy by the name, is it Shamwa? Who also wanted to overturn David. So David first two coups. But he was not completely destroyed. God had mercy on him until he died. Yeah. The reason is this, because David noticed that he was a sinner and went back to God and repented. And repented. But there were consequences. I want us to warn us that as we are being focusing on uh, investing our talent, let's not look behind. Yeah? If you have put your eyes on a plow, you don't look behind. Is that how you put it? Yes. Um, maybe those who used to plow with cows or oxen, like uh, I trust my elder brother, elder Miswa Zed here could have tried it. Plow with a plow of cattle. You did it. Yes. Ukiangalia kandot, if you look on the side, they mess. So you must look and focus. So we should not look aside. Let's look forward and move on. The word of God also says, to whom much is given, much is expected. I don't know whether you have been given two or five. That's another principle. God expects much from you. I got promoted where I was last year. And I thought it is going to be bliss. But much is really expected from me. I averagely sleep beyond 10 p.m. But by 4, I am awake. And from 4, phones, walk here, do what? Busy. From Monday to Sunday. Sunday, simply put off my phone. That's what I've done. But if I were to put it out, people would be looking at me. The reason is, to whom much is given, much is expected. What did you expect? God has given you much, so he expects you to work hard. Don't feel that they have given me a lot of work, that I'm doing too much at church, 
I know these elders, when it comes to sharing, can even be midnight when you are sleeping and you are supposed to share in the morning. You wonder, God, where will I get the strength for this? But somehow, somehow, God is always faithful. He gives us the energy and we wake up. And when you catch uh, your mic, I don't know what you use to share the podcast, it goes on and you share. You not be let down. I always ask people if I went somewhere and I wanted somebody to work for me and I had three people and asked them, could you please work for me? And I hear their answers. One says, I don't have time, sir. I'm, 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 I'm occupied. I'm too busy. And then one says, oh, yes, I have time. That one, Tafanyaru. And then one says, maybe I'll answer you later. Whom do you pick? Me, I know whom I pick. The one who says they are too busy is the one I go for. They will always deliver. So are you too busy? You are the candidate for God's work. Don't fear. Don't give an excuse that I'm too busy. God loves you. That's why he has given you that job. Huh? Don't think that by being too busy, then is an excuse before God. He expects you to do something at that point. So, my brother and sister, God loves you. That's why he has given you those talents. He has told us in Philippians, maybe if you can open there, 4.13. Philippians 4.13, those who are there. Philippians 4.13. As we read there, God loves the diligent, the hard worker. Um, and he does the opposite. Where, do we, where are we? Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Eh, do you remember that? I can do all things through Christ. Sometimes I wonder what is God saying here. I can do all things? Yes, that's the truth. If you stay focused, God will enable you to do all things. Finally, but not least here, God hates laziness. God hates laziness. This person with one talent, he started accusing God <laughs> that he knows God. Can you imagine accusing your boss? Hmm? that he reaps where he did not plant. Uh, read Proverbs 13, 4. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. We know this. Um, I live somewhere in the West and I have seen people you have a family, they have a good piece of land, maybe two acres. But when you check to see whether they, they are planted anything, there is nothing in it. Some are even close to a river. They can simply plant vegetables. But there's nothing. And all you hear, they are complaining that people don't love me, they don't give me. Do you know where the problem is? Niwewe. The Bible says, a little slumber, a little sleep, and poverty does what? It, it, there's another one which says, is it raids or what? Strikes. If you want to welcome poverty, invite a little slumber, a little sleep. You need to rise up from your bed and do something. Recall what the word of God says. This lazy man, the boss, rebuked him. 
when you go to God and say, and accuse him because he has chosen you to be, to do one of the, the, the talent that he wishes you to do. Maybe, you know, some may wonder, is it God who has done that? No. But when your pastor is telling you you need to be, to choose one of these, you need to be an evangelist or a teacher or it'll be a Sunday school teacher or you need to be um, a servant. You usher in people and you say, no. Mine is just to come in and sit. Do you know one thing? The truth is that you will not grow in church. And once you can't grow, there's this chance that you begin backsliding. Are we together here? That's where poverty comes in. You begin to backslide. And once you backslide, you know what happens. It's much harder to pick you from this latter position than when you were before. Hmm? Now, the word of God says uh, to this wicked man, but this Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So, you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. That little one talent you have, is it ushering? You, know to, you need to spy it. And at my coming, I'd have received back my, with, my own with interest. So, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. I don't know why they didn't give the one who had two or four this time. Oh yeah, it's four. God still expects you when you have four to work a bit harder. When they reach ten, he'll give even you even more. I am blessed. I am blessed. Every day of my life I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning, when I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am blessed. I pray that you are blessed. And you are blessed with many talents. So go out there and do what? And invest them. May the Lord bless you. They are actually in God. It's called a just reward. You get a just reward, isn't it? So when you invest, God makes sure you get what is due of you or for you. <laughs> for you eh? And the beauty with God, God multiplies. Amen? So, haikuji tu ile nyuliekeza inakuja na ya kuongezea. Sindio? So, let's invest in God. Let's invest in the things of God. Let's invest in the work of God. Amen? Thank you very much, Elder. For that reminder, it is a truth that we need to put into practice. Amen.